Hey folks, welcome back once again to Tips from the Server Room. And this is our, obviously, as the um, as the uh, title gave it away there, this is the first, the very first uh, view here, from me at least, of Windows Server 2016 Standard Technical Preview 5. Now, I told you the other day, if you listen to the podcast, that this technical preview is good for 180 days. And I don't know how that works out, but it told me that it's good until December 31st of 2016. So they're giving you a lot of time to uh, view this technical preview and play with it and, you know, see what it has to offer us. Now, I can tell you, first of all, slow up as a virtual machine, but it, it, it looks and feels very much like Windows 10. So... Uh, the look and the feel is, again, very much like Windows 10. Let me click on the Start menu down here, and you'll see that it has that Windows 10 feel. It has the tools over here, you know, your programs, and it has the little tiles on the other side here. If we open up the Server Manager, you can see very much that it is a server. It's not Windows 10. This is, again, uh, 2016 preview. So... Gives us all of our normal stuff here. I didn't add any roles yet. I didn't create any server groups or do anything. If we click on add roles, and we'll see here that if you go next, then role based, it's very much uh, built again behind the scenes. You know, the front of this looks like Windows 10, but behind the scene, it's very much to the point of uh, that server feel that we're used to having with Windows Server 2012 R2. Click next. Uh, select from a server pool. That's our standard server pool. And then here is all of the meat and potatoes of our Windows servers. Uh, it has all the normal stuff, the certificate services, domain services, uh, federation services, lightweight directory. Uh, so DHCP server, DNS server, fax server, which uh, not too many people use anymore, I guess. File and storage services. This is one of 12 installed. Uh, if we click this little pull-down menu, we can see here where it has file and iSCSI services. Storage services is installed because it's just a local drive. Uh, the host, the Hyper-V, everything that we would see in a normal um, server setup. And as I said, I didn't install any of the roles yet or any services on here outside of the standard service. So if you click on the uh, domain, Active Directory Domain Services, we will then turn this into an Active Directory uh, server. But I'm not going to do that right now. I think I'll do another video later on. I just want to give you one of those first looks. So again, uh, you can do other services, uh, add other servers to manage. So you can manage multiple servers through one screen. I think that's pretty handy. We've had that before. Create a server group and connect the server to cloud services. Uh, so we can actually connect this up to uh, maybe something like Microsoft's uh, cloud services. And close that out. What was really weird to me is uh, it has Microsoft Edge built into it. And what you'll find out, and what I found out right away was, Microsoft Edge uh, will not even open as the administrator. So you have to create a standard user. So they're already protecting the system that way where if you want to use any of these items, you have to set up as a standard user, which I'm logged into now. Uh, but it works just as any other web browser would work. Uh, if you've played with Edge, you know, you either love it or you hate it. Um, I'm not a fan or, or I'm not going to uh, knock it in any way. It's a web browser and it works as a web browser. It's pretty speedy. Um, I did load this up with, I believe I loaded it up with 8 gigs of RAM. And you're going to need... Uh, at least nine gigabytes uh, of storage to load this, uh, at least a preview. Um, so I actually set up to 12 gigabytes because it makes the swap drive and everything there. So you're going to have to set that up so it's able to run on this thing. But um, it, it's very clean. You know, I loaded up the first time and, and I actually picked the wrong setup. Be very careful when you install this. Because the first option, uh, I got through the setup and I didn't read it. You know, You know how tech guys are. And it'll end up being the uh, the core system. If you've ever played with core, when you load that up as a server, all you have is a command line, and you have to type everything into the command line. Yeah. Uh, it will, you know, comes up, and it kind of, kind of almost looks like like a PowerShell like this. So, and you would type everything into your command line is how that would work. Um, but there's no graphics to it. 
Um, the graphics itself, I was kind of thrown back because if I right click and I go to personalize, you'll see here, um, if you go to uh, themes, you can actually download more themes for this. So now folks, if you do that on a server, you're actually creating more overhead on the server than what you need to do. Let's face it, we don't log into these things every day and, and play around with them. So I really wouldn't suggest doing that. Um, I would just leave it pretty much standard. You can even make it probably even dumb it down even more. Um, but, you know, they got desktop backgrounds. You can put pictures in here. And, you know, uh, really a server's not meant for that. So I would kind of leave that alone. Everything else is pretty much as you would suspect it would. Uh, you got the Windows 10 uh, file browser, just, you know, the file manager here, file explorer, just like your Windows 10 machines. So I will be playing around more with this. I will record some more videos uh, once I turn it into an Active Directory a domain controller. We'll look around a little bit with that and see how that's uh, all working out there and how that's going to run for us. Don't forget, if you get an opportunity, as always, let me see if I can bring this up in my browser here. Um, let's see here. Um, let's try to bring this up here. We'll bring up... Uh, Tips from the server room. So don't forget to uh, check out Tips from the server room and uh, visit the site, uh, listen to the podcast. And if you want to take classes, all you got to do is click on the online class link at the top. And here's the classes. Uh, if you want to get more familiar with Windows Server 2016, uh, the look and feel and the usability of it, you may want to sign up for the uh, Windows Server 2012 course. If you click on that, that will take you in to the courses. And then you can sign up for either uh, the VMware ESXi course, Windows Server 2012 R2, or Windows Server 2008 R2, if you're still using that, which it still, it still works, and it's still uh, uh, used and still updated, and the patches, security patches are still going to be there. So there's everything you need to know. So again, check that out. If you want to go straight to the classes, it's classroom.jackstechcorner.com. All right, well, thanks for watching this really quick video, uh, this first look at Windows Server 2016. Again, this is the standard version, the technical preview number five. Uh, you can download it for yourself if you just go to uh, just do a search. I just did a search for download Windows Server 2016. Found it really easily. Uh, if you don't have an account with Microsoft, you'll have to set one up. If you have a Hotmail account, that will work. Uh, or a um, Outlook.com account would probably work. Any account really with Microsoft should work for you. So thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you as we get more of these uh, built. I'm really excited to start poking around this thing and seeing, uh, you know, kick the tires a little bit and see what it has to offer me. Folks, thanks for watching. Again, check out the podcast at tipsfromtheserverroom.com. You can also find me on iTunes and also on um, the uh, techpodcast.com. Take care, and I'll talk to you next time. Bye for now.